This week, Boris Johnson defended his record on the cost of living, and then, despite literally everything, claimed that he was upholding standards in politics. After Keir Starmer repeated his calls for a windfall tax on energy companies to help people pay their bills, Boris Johnson said, uh, I just remind the House that the Right Honourable Gentleman struggled uh, to define what a woman was. Uh, <laughs> People have been struggling to heat their homes and are now skipping meals, and this is the moment you choose to stoke your culture war on gender identity. What we want to do is take a sensible approach governed by the impact on investment. But BP have already said that a windfall tax wouldn't affect their investments over the next eight years because they literally have more money than they know what to do with. They have, however, said the unpredictability of windfall taxes might affect future investments, which means that you've got eight years to convince them that you'll only put a windfall tax on if they skyrocket prices again whereas people are struggling to pay their bills now. And he repeatedly tried to paint the Tories as the party of low tax and Labour as the party of high tax. This government is not in principle in favour of higher taxation. Labour puts up taxes, Labour put up taxes. But they're not putting up taxes in their lust to raise taxes. Despite inflicting the highest tax burden since the Second World War. Uh, we're already helping people with the cost of living uh, in any way that we can. Okay, so there's no more that you could possibly do to help people pay their bills. And they all know that the government is going to do more. Wait, now I'm confused. And despite the British people suffering the sharpest fall in living standards since 1956, and Johnson knows this because it's his government's Office of Budgetary Responsibility that calculated it, he says, We have a strong and robust economy. And then Boris Johnson gives his usual spiel about low unemployment. There's never been a Labour government that left office with unemployment lower than when it came in. Unemployment's now hit a record low. There's never been a Labour government that left office with unemployment lower than when they began. We have record low unemployment. Because I'm not an economist, I don't usually like to even try and call out stuff about employment figures, but now we can. With living standards falling so sharply and inflation rising faster than wages, we know that his employment stats aren't telling the full story about what that work is buying people. And yet Boris Johnson is doing a victory lap while people are skipping meals. And on Brexit, Johnson says the food industry now has 73 trade deals uh, to exploit. 63 of which were simply rolled over from EU membership. And according to the government's own figures, it hasn't exactly been a net positive. Then an MP asks Johnson how his MPs have followed the principles of the ministerial code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No bullying and no harassment, no leaking, no misuse of taxpayers' money, and no actual or perceived conflicts of interest. On a scale of 1 to 10, How's he doing with keeping to those principles? 10 out of 10, Mrs. Speaker. Home Secretary found guilty of bullying. One of you is watching porn in Parliament. 100 crimes committed during lockdown in Downing Street, including the Prime Minister. Most of you tried to let an MP get away with bribery. Matt Hancock got caught having an affair during lockdown. Robert Jenrick unlawfully tried to help a Tory donor avoid paying £45 million. 99% of the Covid contracts awarded in 2020 went without any competition process. And one Tory MP just got arrested due to allegations of rape. 10 out of 10, Mrs. Speaker. Really?